In this episode, I want to show you how to do a partial water change with tadpole tanks. Now, if you already keep fish, you'll know how to do this already. Uh, but if this is new to you, then this could be some useful information for you to have. And also, I want to talk to you a little bit about the health of the tadpoles, especially as they begin to metamorphose into little frogs. It's not happening just yet, but it will be happening in the next few weeks. And uh, there is something that I think we can do to kind of give them the best start in life. So thank you very much for joining me for this week's episode of Frog Watch. So this is now episode 6 of the Frog Watch series, and if you have missed any, I'll leave a link to the playlist down below and you can catch up if, you, if you're interested. Uh, now, that does mean that we've had these tanks set up now for coming up to 6 weeks, um, and even though the water looks really clear, I haven't done any water changing or cleaning at all. Um, but I think now it's time that we should, even though the water is clear, it's still a good idea to do some water changes uh, every few weeks. Um, now, there's a couple of reasons for that. Obviously, tadpoles will expel waste and nitrogen tends to build up in the water. Now, one of the benefits of having live plants in the tank is they will actually take out that nitrogen and they use it for their own growth. And they, the plants do help to keep the tank clean. And uh, so not only for oxygen uh, purposes, they do keep, keep the tank clean as well. Um, but there's another reason why we might want to change up the water frequently. And that's because uh, at this stage you may notice, if you're keeping tadpoles yourself, that some of the tadpoles are getting quite big, but other ones don't seem to have grown much at all. That's perfectly normal and will happen uh, every year. Um, now, one of the reasons for that is tadpoles will release a hormone into the water that slows the growth of other tadpoles in, the, in that area. And this is kind of a survival strategy. The big ones keep getting bigger and they keep the other ones smaller. And so obviously if you're the biggest in the pond, uh, you're likely to get to the food first, you're likely to change first, you get out first. Uh, you just have those advantages of being bigger while everyone else is smaller. So the tadpoles, they release this hormone into the water, it inhibits the growth of the other tadpoles and uh, they get big and they get strong and it's, it's beneficial for them. So um, to, to kind of prevent that from happening, or at least to kind of uh, keep the tadpoles on an even keel, remove some of the water and replace it with fresh water, then you're removing that hormone. Um, obviously, the more frequently you do the changes, the more benefit you'll see to that, uh, if that's something you're worried about. It really doesn't matter, um, but sometimes the, some of these smaller tadpoles, they'll stay quite small for a very long time, and you can kind of be left with a tank with like one tadpole in, because it just refuses to grow. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. Basically, the, the procedure is very simple. As I said before, if you keep fish, you'll know how to do it anyway. All I'm going to do is I'm going to remove about half of the water down to about here and then just fill it up with some fresh stuff. And that's really all I'm going to do. It's a very simple process. So I'm going to go on to that one and then I'm going to talk to you about the second aspect um, is a, the health of the tadpoles as they begin to, to change. Uh, but yeah, but let's get on with the water change. <laughs> Okay, so as I've now removed half of the water from the tank, I'm going to replace it with some fresh stuff. And now this is tap water, and tap water has chlorine in. And as we found out a few episodes ago when I used tap water um, to set up the new tank, some of the tadpoles did die. Now, uh, I did leave the tap water for about 24 hours, or a bit more over that actually, and normally that, that has been okay in previous years, but um, I'm, I'm thinking that wasn't long enough and there, there was still chlorine in the water. So I don't want to make that mistake again. So this time I'm going to be using a tap safe. Now this is the kind of stuff that you use for goldfish to, to remove uh, chlorine from the water to make it safe to put it straight in. So I've got about two litres of fresh water in here and the instructions say about a cap full of this stuff will uh, remove the chlorine from about two litres of water. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Okay, so now that I've done a water change on both the tanks, the other thing I want to talk to you a little bit about is the health of the tadpoles as they begin to change into frogs. Now, in, in the, a couple of the previous years, I've noticed that there has been some deformities as they begin to change. Uh, there's been some uh, twists in the spines, there's kind of an S shape to the tails of the tadpoles, 
and that has kind of a, translated into a kind of a twist in the spine of the frogs as they changed. Um, a few years ago we had some really bad ones where we had some deformed legs, so some of the legs were kind of bending the wrong way, they were completely deformed, and, and of course those ones that were, were that badly deformed uh, never ended up surviving. Uh, so um, I really wasn't too sure what had caused it, but someone in the comment section a few years ago pointed out that the symptoms look a lot like rickets disease. Uh, now rickets is caused by lack of calcium. And of course, when you take tadpoles out of a natural environment and put them into an artificial environment, sometimes some things are missing. We try our best for them by providing them with food and clean water and plants and things like that. Uh, but sometimes see some of the natural minerals that kind of are present in ponds as a, a natural built up ecosystem can be missing from artificial environments. So I have to think about what we could do to kind of uh, make sure that the tadpoles are getting the, the requirements that they need. So one thing I thought of is using uh, some of these cut fish bones. And these are the kind of things you get for uh, pet birds. You know, put one in the cage and they'll nibble on them. Uh, but when it's down the beak, prevent them getting overgrown and also provides them with the calcium they need for bone growth and that kind of thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to break off a few chunks and I put it into the water. And hopefully over time it will kind of uh, dissolve into the water and the tadpoles will nibble on it as algae grows on it. And hopefully that will be a good way of getting calcium into them. And hopefully this year we won't see any of those kind of deformities. So I'm going to take a little bit of that, put a few chunks in each tank, and we'll just see how that goes. Incredible actually, they almost immediately started to nibble on the calcium as I've just put it in. Okay, well that's about all I wanted to cover for you this week. Uh, just before you go, I did manage to sneak down to the pond uh, to check on the tadpoles there while I was out for my daily exercise walk. And uh, there were some really interesting scenes and I'll show you to them right now. Well, thank you very much for watching this week. I really do appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video, please let me know by leaving a like or a comment down below. And please subscribe so you can follow along more. And of course, if you are following along, if you have got tadpoles at home, please do let me know how that's going. You can follow me on Twitter or join my Discord server. And you can, if you take some pictures, stick them online, ping me, make sure you tag me in those posts so I can see how you're getting on. I absolutely love seeing other people's pictures and videos of their own set up and make sure you keep me updated with, with your progress. I really do love that. Um, so yeah, so I will see you next time out, hopefully with some more exciting tap hole adventures. I'll see you then, goodbye.